Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. Here in Lesson 9, what we're going to do is take a tour, a little bit of a deeper tour around the Eclipse Editor. i just like to make you a little more comfortable and a little more familiar with what we're dealing with here. The number one thing to remember is that the Eclipse Editor is really a professional level um, Java integrated development environment. And so there's a ton of features. As you learn and start to master Java over the years, you might find lots of uses for these features, but right now we're really more concerned with just understanding the basics of Java. So there are many, many, many things that I'll never cover. Uh, and I want you to understand that if I don't cover them, it doesn't mean they're not useful. It just means that they're not relevant, and not I I that important to understanding the basics of Java. So here we are in the overarching uh, bird's eye view of everything here. Here we have our last file that we were just working on open lesson 8.java and in here we can see we have our code so naturally you're going to type your code into the center window into this Java file that's where we're going to be editing our code and, and doing all of that stuff. Um, now on the left hand side is what we call the package explorer. This is basically a directory view of all of the projects that you've created in your workspace. So notice remember we had lesson 7 and now we have lesson 8 and you can kind of see you can drill down these guys here. You can see that inside the lesson 7 uh, package or project there's a source folder. Uh, and when you drill down inside the source folder, inside what they call the default package, we have our Java file, lesson8.java, which is right here. If you were to add additional Java files to this particular project, they would show up here just like a folder structure. Now let me go and show you something. Um, this is my workspace that I have for the lesson development for this course, and you can see that there's a metadata file that Eclipse created, but there uh, is a Lesson 7 project and a Lesson 8 project, and Eclipse created these directories. I didn't do this. Eclipse created it. That's the nice thing about it. Inside the Lesson 8 folder, we have a source folder and a bin folder, and if you remember when we created the new project, like if we go to New Java Project, it's going to tell us create separate folders for sources and class files and that's what they're really talking about here. The source folder is going to create your contain your Java files so if we double click that you can see lesson8.java this is the file that we are basically editing here called lesson8.java right as we modify the file and save it this is what gets updated here. We also have the bin directory. After we compile to bytecode, to Java bytecode, the .class file is created. Those are stored in the bin directory. So you can see that the lesson8.class file is right here. This is what I would be able to email to a person on a Unix system, and in theory they should be able to run this file without a problem on a Java virtual machine. Now all of the other things here, aside from this, is all created by Eclipse. So classpath.project file, settings folder, all of those things are just created by Eclipse, so there's no need for you to worry about it. It's just what Eclipse uses to keep track of everything. If I start deleting Java files or changing them or adding additional ones, then in the background they're all going to be created inside the source folder. The class files are automatically going to go into the bin folder, and basically that is that. If I want to delete an entire project, I can right click on lesson 8, I can go to delete, it's going to say are you sure you want to remove it and I have the option to delete the entire project from my disk if I want to. Uh, if I check this it will be deleted from my disk, if I don't check this then it will disappear from the package explorer but it will still remain on my hard drive. I'm going to click cancel because I don't want to delete anything. So this is a bird's eye view of your hard drive essentially, the projects you have. As you work with me you'll see more and more of them pop up. This is where you type your code in. and of course, if we want to go back and look at Lesson 7, we can go in here and we've drilled down to Lesson7.java. I can double click on this and I can open Lesson7.java and let's say I can you know, compile this one. I can hit this guy. I love to program is what this code is in Lesson7.java. I can kill that and go back to Lesson 8 and run this guy again right here and it's going to ask me if I want to save it, so I will. Computers are pretty neat. That's what this code is in Lesson8.java. So I can open and close different Java files that I have in my Package Explorer uh, without any problem. All right, at the bottom of the screen, this is our console. This is basically simulating this when we did our first program, I Love Apples. Manually, it all outputted to what we call the command prompt, but it's also called the console. You don't have to keep this window open because in Eclipse, it's all right down here. Uh, right there for you. So as we go through the programs we'll be constantly outputting things to the screen, learning the logic of Java. This is where we're going to look for the output of the program. 
And finally, the thing on the right hand side of the screen is uh, things that you know you're not going to use right now, but as you get more proficient in Java, you might find a need for it. The outline here at the bottom is basically an outline of what your program is. So this is your code in the middle window in all of its glory, but Eclipse generates kind of a thumbnail view of what your code is. Right now it's telling you there's a lesson 8 class and there's a main method inside that class. So at a bird's eye level, that's really all we have. We have, uh, we have a main method, that's it. And as we create more methods and more classes and more complicated programs, then this outline will look a little more complicated. It's a thumbnail view of what we're doing. Right now, early in the in the your learning of Java, you, you don't care what's over here at all. Up here is what we have a task list, right? This is, uh, it's kind of like a little notes system for you. You can create a new task for yourself. Like maybe I want to create a new task to uh, create a method to average two numbers. Maybe I want to create a new class or, or a new method to, um, you know, uh, print something on the screen about how to tie my shoelaces. I mean, if you have a very complicated program, then you're going to be constantly thinking of things. Oh, I need to create this class or I need to I need to create this variable or I need to do this for loop or, or whatever it is. And I might be able to want to create a bunch of tasks for myself that I can then check off as I as I uh, knock it out in my code here. So these two parts on the opposite side of the screen are optional and you can you can close them and get rid of them if you don't like looking at them. That's fine as well. So for instance, if I don't want to see this task list, I can get rid of that. If I don't want to see the outline, I can get rid of that. And then I just have a nice code window over here. And probably this will be how I end up running most of my lessons. If you want to get it back the way it was, you can right click on this Java button here and go to reset and say, would you like to reset the Java perspective? That's kind of uh, what we're talking about here to its defaults and you get it back the way it was. Let me go ahead and kill that get it out of our way. Let me show you one a uh, few more things that you might like. Um, notice that the text here for our code is a little bit bigger than it was when I very very first started the first Eclipse lesson and I changed that. Uh, you might want to change it as well. So if you go to window preferences down here then you have options to do all kinds of things. So under general and under appearance you have colors and fonts and you just scroll down. This is under Java. You scroll down to Java Editor Text Font. If you reset it and hit OK, this is the default font and the default size. This is perfectly fine to work on your computer, but I'm generally going to run it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hit Edit uh, and size 12 work really works for me. It's a little easier on the eyes, plus it's easier for you to see in the lessons. And you can kind of change the colors. You can change all kinds of preferences. Notice how Eclipse is color coding some of these class definitions and these modifier words on the outside. Um, you know, the blue font, all this stuff is totally customizable. If you want to dig into that, you are most welcome to do that. Lastly, what I want to talk about is we've hinted that that Eclipse is trying to help us write code. So it's if I forget the semicolon here, it's going to put a red dot here and it's going to put a, an X over here and it's going to try to tell me insert semicolon to complete block statement. And that's going to give me another reminder at the end of the line. So it's pretty good at detecting missing semicolons. Um, sometimes it's better than others. If you make other mistakes, it might not quite know what you're trying to do, but it tries to at least flag your attention. Now, let me show you something real quick. As I type, let's say I want to output another line of text. So if I say system dot, and as I type the dot, Java is trying to give me an, a list of system options that I can choose from here, right? So there's a lot of them here. We don't care about a lot of these things. The one we want is out because we're doing print the print stream, uh, which is printing characters to what we're going to end up going is to the console. So, but you can either double click if you want to just hunt around for what you're looking for, or you can just continue typing the word. So I'm able to double click there. Uh, I can erase what it default puts in there and I can put my quotations and I love oranges, right? And notice we have our red squiggly with a semicolon It's trying to remind us that we want that. And then I can go ahead and save this guy and then I can run it. And then in the console tab, the first line, we see the uh, first line of text and the second line, we see the second line of text. So that's pretty neat. It's trying to give us, um, it's trying to give us hints. Now let me show you something else. Notice that in the system dot out uh, that we have here, the S in system is capitalized, right? Let's see what happens if we try a lowercase system dot out dot. Now notice when I type that dot, it capitalized this because it knows that it's very, very common um, for people to accidentally forget to capitalize system. So the proper word to type for system dot out is capital S 
I intentionally did not do that. I did lowercase s. When I do dot out, dot, whenever I get to the dot, it realizes, okay, he's trying to do this and trying to access this, so he's going to try to capitalize it. Java will not always catch your mistakes like that, but this is so common that it does a pretty good job of it. So just keep in mind that the interface to Eclipse is pretty, um, pretty nice. It's not perfect. It might not catch all of your problems and errors, but it's pretty nice. And I've tried to give you a little overview of how to attack, um, how to run your system. I like running it where I can see a lot of my code here. I see my, a large console. The other two guys that were on the right-hand side were not terribly useful to me. So I like running it like this. And now that you understand how Eclipse is laid out, you can go customize it yourself. There are a ton of things here, and we will use some of these other functions and features as we go forward. But really what you know right now at this moment is the most important essential material to understand how to compile and execute programs in the Java Eclipse IDE.